So now that we have those set up and everything is laid in, we can go into our CryEngine launcher. And I'm going to go ahead and launch it up off screen. You can minimize some of this. I'm going to bring over my launcher or my actual view. And I have a recent file that I've done, which is DFX source. And you'll see that it's in empty level. So if I go to entity and I can go to default, I'm going to grab a flow graph entity and bring it into the level. What I want to do is right click on this. I want to create a flow graph and call this one GF GFX source. So now that we have that in play, let's go ahead and add this to the middle. And what we want to do is press Q and we're going to type in input and we're looking for debug input key. And now what I'm going to do instead of quick searching it, I'm going to go down, let's go to display. And we basically want to do display as it is. So when this is pressed, we want to get the element name, which our element is named GFX source as shown there. And when it's pressed, I want to show it. And when it's released, I want to hide it. The next thing that I want to do is actually put some constraints on here. So it's a totally different node. And we had done it inside of the XML, but this actually allows you to maybe refine it a little bit. So press, we want to set. And we basically want to make sure the width and the height is 512. So I'm just making sure that it's going to show up on our screen exactly as it should. And the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to press Q again, and I'm going to type in action filter. And this will allow us on pressed, we enable, and on released, we disable. And the filter that we want to do is actually the only UI. So then you're restricting all the movement and you can't move. So let's go to add comment. We want to create a comment box. And this is going to be GFX expose. Bring that down. Bring it over. And now we want to go to white. So now if we come back into our perspective view and we jump into the level, just pressing control G, I come in and we can see that it's exposed immediately. And there's something in here because in the input, if we remember, we didn't actually say that and the input of the key on press P would actually expose it. So when this is pressed, it shows when it's hide. So let's jump back in. And basically we have our GFX file. Let's go into our resolution and we're actually going to make this a little bit smaller just because it's rather small as it is. And we'll make it 1280 by 720 and see what happens then. So now we have our GFX file that's still consuming the screen. And the reason it is right here is because it's not on full screen, it should be on fixed. So if we come in and we press P again, now we get our GFX source file at its native resolution of 512 by 512. So you notice through the constraints and through the debugging, you'll always have errors, and you need to be able to work through those and understand that there are multiple things that come to play when you're using a GFX file. So it's great that you were able to see some of the errors or some of the things that are missed because we have our constraints, but it may not be as uh, upfront as anything else because you're bringing up the display and the constraints are a totally different node. And technically speaking, you don't even have to do the action map, action filter to limit the UI only, but there are certain things where the guy can still move around. So if I were to like remove this and come back in here, I can press P and I can still move around. So that would be a case where the action filter actually gives you, gives you an ability to pause the entire screen while the player is doing it. So right now I'm trying to move around and I can't. And this is where all of these things adding up and building on top of each other, you can create complex in-game UIs and then even main menus if you want to bring it up and keep it in the level itself. So keep in mind, these are the different ways you can dress it up, and this is just a basic introduction through the GFX or the Scaleform import pipeline into CryEngine itself.